My brothers and sisters, Shaitan's job is to lead us astray. Every day, almost every moment of the day, he is trying to hatch a plan how to deviate us. Some people, he deviates them in a way, and this is the worst possible way, where he never allows them to see the light, to worship their maker alone. So they worship everything and anything besides their maker alone, and they continue in that ignorance until the day that they are to leave this worldly life, and that would be the ultimate deviance according to what we are taught. But at the same time, there are those who have seen that light because of ultimately the guidance of Allah, and thereafter the acceptance of Allah for you to be in the correct environment or in the correct system when you were born or later on you interacted with the correct people, you asked the correct questions, and you happened to be inquisitive. Hence, it is very important as Muslims to be inquisitive and to keep asking. When you're not certain about something, you ask, and you ask again and again, until you are satisfied with the response. And until such time, you should not be ashamed of asking. Even if some of those questions are a little bit embarrassing, it's okay. I want to learn. And sometimes people might tell you that, look, I don't have the response. And another will give you a reply, and a third will give you a more convincing response. However, let this be guided by something known as it, revelation. Remember, if there are billions, trillions, and quadrillions of people throughout history who are telling you the same thing, it's almost impossible for all of them through the generations to have lied in such a way that the same thing kept going down. For example, the fact that we were created from Adam, the fact that there was our mother Eve or, or Hawa, may peace be upon them, that has come down generation upon generation in such a way that it would be impossible for that to be a lie. Not just the Muslims, but the Christians, the Jews, and even those before and many others, they have confirmed this. Similarly, the fact that we have a maker, Yes, I know that there are people now on the globe who say whatever they want to say, that everything was a coincidence and everything was just, it just happened and nature brought it forth and so on. But the believers are far greater in number through the generations, not just now, but from the beginning of time. From the time Adam, may peace be upon him, was sent onto earth, the stories are very similar, if not almost identical in many aspects. So, the fact that we have a maker, now, the fact that devil exists and shaitan exists, and what he did, that also came to us, and we feel it, where, whenever there are good things to be done, even for a person who doesn't have a faith at all, when he has to be disciplined, he feels lazy, even to get up in the morning, he feels lazy, and then to do the right things, that which would help you, say for example, a person who doesn't believe at all, they go to school, they feel lazy to follow rules, they feel lazy to do the right things. They find it difficult to do so much that is connected to discipline. Why? Because shaitan's aim is to make you an indisciplined person, one who follows his own whims and fancies and desires. Hence, even if it was just a school that gave you rules or a religion that placed rules, a person who is trapped by shaitan would not want to follow any rules. He wants to fulfill what is known as my wish, my whims, my fancies what I desire. So religion comes in, and Allah Almighty, the Maker, what has He told us? Whether it's a Muslim, a Jew, or a Christian, or those who follow other faiths, the rules and regulations are there to discipline you, to make you a person who will succeed without regret, a person who does not have, who does not just have a moment of joy followed by a lifetime of regret, but rather a person who understands that I need to follow Rules and regulations in a way that my contentment is extended, not just throughout my little life on this earth, but beyond going into the hereafter. And this is why we say, my brothers, my sisters, ponder and think. Allah Almighty himself asks us to ponder, to think. Think about the creation of the heavens and the earth and the day and the night and its rotation and how it operates. And Allah says, you know what? You will find that you have a maker. There are signs in there that will lead you to worshipping your maker alone. And you will say, 
Rabbana ma falapota hada baqila. O my Lord, O our Lord, you have not created all of this in vain. We were to be hit by a cyclone early morning, or today, today and tomorrow. And mashallah, we're all praying, we're all making dua, we're all asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and we still ask for goodness and so on. And yes, it has hit land as we speak, but take a look at the weather outside right now. What does it look like? We were expecting, in fact, today they declared that schools shall be closed. Hence, we see quite a few people here, mashallah. That's what was declared. I'm not saying they were wrong. All right, I'm not a part of that decision making, nor am I an expert. But what I want to tell you is, look at the weather out there. We still hope tomorrow and the following day is going to be better. We might have heavy rains and so on, but we're hoping that Allah will spare us and others the wrath or the loss or the destruction. I mean, that having been said, doesn't it show you that man sometimes makes big blunders? He cannot even predict what's going to happen tonight or this afternoon or after a moment. And yet we think that Allah Almighty who already told us that it's in my hands. You pray to Allah. You believe in miracles. We believe in miracles. Something impossible is not impossible for Allah. How many times have things that are totally impossible happened because Allah willed them? Things that man said this, there is no chance that this would happen. And it came and it happened and it was. Subhanallah. That's Allah. He has proven to us that he exists. Now, what does Allah do? Because he knows that he has let shaitan come to us in order to whisper within our systems to do the wrong thing. And then he has the angels and his forces who, who come to us instructing us to do the right things. And then you have us in the middle whom he has given a brain he has given thinking capacity, he has given a responsibility, and he has allowed a certain level of choice. And he tells us, I want you to navigate through all of this and worship me alone. That's the whole reason why I've created you. I don't have a say as to why Allah made me. I will never know unless I'm told. People say, why am I on earth? Well, the best answer that there is in existence is that you are here in order to worship your maker, and return to him in a beautiful way. No other answer, and there are millions of other answers, no other answer is as satisfactory as that. Because I'm on earth. Do you really think such a sophisticated human being with such a unique identity in more than a thousand ways you are absolutely unique, different from the first of your species right to the last in your identity? Do you really reckon that I'm just coming on earth to enjoy myself, come, go to school, earn a little bit of money, uh, enjoy, buy the latest of things, have fun and die and go, and that's it, it's the end of all. It's impossible. That's not the case. A person who thinks and believes will realize, you know what, there is a greater purpose. I may struggle here. That means on the other side, if I worshipped my maker alone, I would not struggle. And if I have not struggled here and I've still worshipped my maker alone, I'll be one of the few lucky ones who who have gained this world and the next, and that's what we ask for in the dua, Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana wa fil akhirati hasana. Oh, our Lord, grant us goodness in this world and goodness in the hereafter. But you need to know, Allah's divine plan is he has the forces of evil, the forces of goodness, and you, O oh man, in the center there, and he's given you the tools to navigate through the two, and he says, I want you with all of this around you to still navigate through it in the way that you worship me alone. Come back to me, and I'll tell you where you have succeeded and where you failed. May Allah grant us success. So in the interim, what does he do? Less than 30 days from now, we have the month of Ramadan. What is it? It's one of those massive positive seasons that are there for reflection and, and gaining the correct relation with Allah once again. It's called taqwa, to develop your consciousness of Allah. That's the whole reason why that month is in existence. Allah says, we know you will sway from time to time. We know what you need in order for you to remain on that path and to understand the plot and the plan of the devil and to know that we want you to navigate through what we just said a few moments ago. We want you to navigate through all these forces and circumstances and come out from it someone who's closer to us than they were previously. So I'm going to enter the month of Ramadan if Allah wills. If, if he wants, he can take me and you before that. You and I can go right now today. But Allah says, Start preparing for this month. 
We're already now in the month just preceding Ramadan. What should you be doing? You should be fasting. Even in this month, it's not compulsory, but it's a sunnah. It is something the Prophet, peace be upon him, did. Get used to Mondays and Thursdays, my brothers, my sisters. It will help you in every way. It will even improve your health. And our intention is not, the primary intention is not that because my health improves, that's why I'm going to fast. But it's because it's a sunnah I'm going to fast. And as a result, my health will also improve, inshallah, because when you obey Allah, you'll improve in every single way. The primary intention is to please Allah, to do it because the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, did it. Whether you understand it or not, medicine has only discovered now the benefit of intermittent fasting and so on, and fasting two days in the week, and that's exactly how they've worded it. Similarly, the 13th, 14th, and 15th of the lunar calendar, it's a sunnah to fast. We ask Allah to strengthen us, and then start during this month to increase the recitation of your Qur'an. Start improving on the way you recite, the pronunciation. Start learning the meanings. Be dedicated. Start looking for a, a, a text perhaps that would explain to you the words of Allah in a language you understand and make an effort to understand the word of Allah because indeed it is the most powerful word in existence. A man came to me and told me, what proof do you have that the Quran is the true scripture? I said, what other options do you have? He says, we have the Torah, the Talmud, the, we have the, the Bible and so on. He gave me a list of, I said, you tell me from all of those, which is the better according to you, not according to me. According to me, it's not a question of better. That is the scripture. So he says, well, uh, I suppose, yeah, it's the Quran, but you know, but I said, okay, let's stop there. So the best of what we have in the market, according to you, is actually the Quran. Well, I say, it is the best. Finished. Because the others, if you have a doubt in the Quran, there is greater doubt in everything else that exists. So what would you follow? That which has greater doubt or less doubt, according to you, not me. For me, there's no doubt. You see the difference? Anyway, he had to surrender and he had to accept and say, you know what? In actual fact, you're right. But still, Allah will not guide those who believe it's right if Allah doesn't want that guidance because many people know what's right and wrong. They're either too scared, they're too afraid, or sometimes they just don't want or they fear. They will lose what they have around them. The kuffar of Mecca, many of them knew what was the truth. Allah says, but they were oppressive, they were wrongdoers, they denied, they belied. They just used to deny the verses of Allah. I'm, the, I'm a leader, I'm going to lose my position because if I become a Muslim, they're going to do this to me and that to me. You know what? You have Allah more or your position more? And you make a decision. May Allah Almighty grant us goodness. Allah has blessed us with a month of Ramadan that's about to come. Prepare for it. Soften your hearts. Solve your problems. Resolve your matters. Try and solve the enmity between you. Brothers are not speaking. Sometimes people have issues and problems. Try your best to resolve it. Not everyone's going to be able to resolve every matter. Did you try? Did you give it your, did you give it your best shot? The answer is yes. Well, inshallah, Allah's seen that. And then you enter the month of Ramadan, beautiful, as clean as possible, with the idea of cleansing yourself further and elevating your status even beyond. And you see what will happen when you take what Allah has considered sacred as sacred. Allah will open your hearts and Allah will grant you success in this world and the next. For indeed, he is the owner of entire existence. What you are searching for, Allah owns it. Knock his, at his door and you will find it coming towards you. Here Allah has given us a massive door known as the month of Ramadan. Allahumma balirna Ramadan. Oh Allah, grant us the ability to witness 